What's going on everybody, t -Mode here with another ultra-wide review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077. Now before I kick things off, like usual, I just want to give a big shout out to Al Light for uh, gifting me this game and allowing me to review it for you guys. So Al, thank you so much buddy, really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's kick it right into the ultra-wide support. And as you can see above, the ultra-wide support here is actually really fantastic. Even in cutscenes and everything, the ultra-wide support is there, it's present, it's pretty much perfect. Now, I did have a few issues with it in the early game. Now, I believe this to be due to a bug. Uh, after patch 1.06 had come out for Cyberpunk, I did not experience this anymore. And also, towards the later portion of the game, I didn't experience this anymore. Uh, and while going back and looking at the footage, it does appear that when the game is not in ultra wide while it should be in these cutscenes it does look like it's cutting off some little menu sections and little hints that the game is trying to show off so i do believe that to be a bug in the game uh, and past that all of my ultra wide issues were non-existent the game looks absolutely immaculate in ultra wide and honestly is one of those games that just is better in ultra wide due to it being in a first person perspective Moving on from there towards the graphics. Now, I know I said with Assassin's Creed Valhalla in my last video that it was the best looking game that I had played uh, up until that point. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 definitely comes close to it. It is an immaculate looking game. I, I'm probably going to use that word a lot, but it, the, it is absolutely gorgeous here. The characters are all lifelike and, and have great emotion to them. Uh, the city itself is really beautiful. With all the neon lights bouncing off and shining everywhere, just really giving it this extra little feel that you just don't get in a lot of games. The city itself has this crazy personality due to its looks, and it's just absolutely awesome to look at. Aside from that, everything, including the textures, for the most part, looks really good. Getting close to some things like the food and certain wall textures did look a little bit iffy, especially the food and things like people were eating. It just looked really, really off at those points. But those are really, really minor things that I'm not going to really take off too many points here for, because otherwise the game really does look fantastic. Uh, you can even go towards the guns and the swords, all extremely detailed and amazing looking and every time I pick up a new gun just looking at it all the little hints and little details even though maybe it was the same sniper rifle in terms of body then maybe the color was a little different there's a little scratch here or there it just all came together really well graphically even going out towards the badlands where there's really not much out there it still had its sense of personality and graphically it looked great now the badlands were a little bit empty and I was a little bit disappointed there I felt that they could have added in some more things maybe more communities more anything it just really kind of felt flat even though it still looked beautiful with the, the rolling hills of sand, or dunes of sand, I guess you would call them. Uh, it, it had its own personality, though lacking a little bit in that area. Now, with all this graphical achievement, though, does come a lot of uh, hindrance, honestly. The game runs very, very poorly and it's not necessarily due to poor optimization though i'm sure that's that's a big part of it it is just a very very difficult game to run on top of that with my system which is an i7 9700k along with a 2080 super at ultra wide and high i was really getting unstable uh 60 fps honestly i was getting maybe around 48 to 60 with rtx off of course now uh overall when i was tweaking with all the graphics which you can do a lot of there's a lot of tweaks to be made so don't worry too much on there when you're on pc you have a lot of options to to go with and to change up uh, i did end up on the options of all high uh, but with dlss on actually and with this nvidia has done a great job dlss is great i honestly uh, really didn't notice a huge difference between dlss on and off and the fact that i was able to then once had once i had dlss on get 70 to 90 frames instead of 48 to 60 was absolutely incredible you really do need above 60 fps for this game in my opinion it really translates to a very smooth gaming experience and with the first person person's perspective especially it makes a world of difference uh, when it comes to, to that stuff switching gears into something a little bit different we're gonna go talk about the story and I was actually a little bit disappointed here with the story not to the actual storytelling and what was going on in fact that was really well done uh, all the characters came to life and I actually found myself caring about all of the characters on a deeper level than I think I ever had in any game beforehand which was an odd feeling they all felt like they had a personal connection to me uh, as V and honestly as my Myself, and it made me want to get back into the game and see where the relationships went and see what I could do to foster them and uh, grow them and see what would happen towards the end of the story with all of these people that I was meeting and you know, basically taking care of as well as helping out as well as who were helping me out. It was a really well done portion of it. However, 
when talking about the story itself, it was actually relatively short. Uh, I beat the game in around 32 hours, and that was with doing a good amount of side quests. In fact, probably maybe 10 to 15 hours worth of side quests. There's really not a whole lot of main story here. However, I do recommend when playing this game to go off and do a lot of the side missions. It actually will affect how the game can conclude, so I do highly recommend going off, doing a bunch of the story missions, especially the ones that you get from side characters that are actually in the game in terms of the main story. Uh, and overall, the story itself, it was good. It it wasn't anything that blew me out of the water. It wasn't anything that I maybe had not seen before and, and think that was something super special. It is a great story. Uh, do not get me wrong there. It's just nothing that really stood out as this is revolutionary in any sense. It's still a very good story. It's still a story that I absolutely recommend uh, checking out and enjoying. Now, switching gears to gameplay, this is actually going to be a little bit more of a mixed bag for me, uh, especially due to the obvious fact that there is a litany of bugs within this game. I think that's no surprise to anyone. I think everyone who has uh, heard about the controversy surrounding Cyberpunk 2077 and its release uh, knows that this game, at the very least, is a buggy mess, and that is no different even if you can actually run the game uh, by not having a PS4 or Xbox One. While most of the bugs I encountered were not necessarily game breaking, I experienced plenty of bugs often and almost every time loading up the game I completely expected it to bug out on me and for something weird to happen or to possibly cause me to die or at the very worst possibly stop me from completing the next mission. Overall though, my gameplay was relatively little affected by all of this. Now, the gunplay felt really good, it was very punchy, all the guns felt wonderful. I didn't do a lot of melee combat, I won't lie, uh, but from the little that I did, it really was interesting and pretty fun. Uh, there wasn't a lot of complexity behind it, but it had enough to, to keep me interested in it. The driving of vehicles was a little bit odd. Now, this wasn't necessarily a bug, but the cars all felt extremely weighty. Uh, handbrakes weren't the best, and, and turning wasn't very good. I definitely had a lot of trouble getting used to driving in Night City and the Badlands, uh, mostly just due to how the cars felt. Now, they felt very, like I said, weighty, and they had all a different feel, and there's a litany of cars that, again, you can use in this game, which is awesome, uh, but they all definitely feel like they have a lot of weight behind them and that they are a little bit tougher to drive, almost like you're, you're driving a a 18 wheeler down the uh, city street stealth is also a major aspect of this game and i felt that a little bit because of the bugs and mostly because i'm not very good at stealth games i wasn't able to really go through and play very stealthily uh, i wish it had been a little bit easier i wish that the bugs weren't there so it, it didn't have as many screw-ups uh but there is a stealth option there is kind of a hacking option which i also tried out and didn't find to be very uh, useful or entertaining. There's a lot of tutorials that come at you very quick and they don't explain a lot, uh, at least for me, enough in terms of what things are doing. Uh, I ended up trying to figure out everything pretty much on my own and for the most part figuring it out relatively quickly. However, it could definitely hold your hand a little bit more at the beginning to let you understand like this is the play style that you've chosen and this is how it is going to be. Speaking of which, of course, everyone knows that you can choose three lifestyles at the beginning of this game, Street Kid, Corpo, or Nomad, and uh, while I chose Corpo myself, I had kind of picked that out the second I saw that that was an option, uh, I do have to say that it does not feel that the starting position really ends up giving you anything different. I think you end up getting a few different lines here or there that you get to use in certain situations with characters. However, it didn't really affect my gameplay very much, and that was actually really disappointing for me. I thought that the lifestyle uh, would really have a huge impact on the game, and it actually just felt like it was almost a tack on, just a way to kind of make the beginning of the story, the first five hours or so, feel a little bit different, and even with that being the case, I don't think they were varying that differently, uh, even in those first five hours from each lifestyle. So that, that, that to me was a pretty big disappointment. But overall, what does this mean? It honestly was a great game to play. The gameplay is fun when it works. As long as the bugs aren't hindering you, the gunplay, like I said, is punchy. It's really good. It's a lot of fun. And being able to go on all these missions is wonderful. The RPG hierarchy of being able to choose all of your perks and your skills also feels pretty good. And you're able to go into a play style that you want to do. Like I said, stealth, melee, uh, running gun, all of that is there for you to do. And it's honestly all really fun. I think they, they did a great job, CD Projekt Red, of uh, making an extremely fun game to play.
Moving on from there, however, I do want to talk about the sound, which is probably the thing that actually worked best in the game. The music in this game is awesome. It definitely lends a feel to a futuristic cyberpunk kind of deal. The, the music honestly killed it. The sounds altogether, especially with the guns, the cars, came in this really, really punchy way as well. I know I've said punchy a lot, but like the, the guns honestly sounded fantastic. The voice acting as well was really awesome from pretty much the entirety of the cast, uh, minus V. I chose male V, of course, uh, and I don't really think that the voice actor was that great. He wasn't bad. It wasn't an unplayable, and like, oh, I can't listen to this guy kind of experience, but he was definitely the weak point of all the voice acting. Everyone else really stood out. Characters like Pan Am, uh, Mitch, Jackie, and, and Misty all really shone through and had this amazing voice talent. Uh, and it really lent to me, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, feeling this more personal connection to these characters. I really felt that when I was going through the game, uh, I had a more personal connection with all of them. And I, I think largely that was part of uh, the voice acting. And so credit to the actors there, as well as actually the way that the story was written and how the characters were written. I think they did an excellent job there. So overall, what does that mean? Well, I've given a lot of praise, as you probably heard, to Cyberpunk while just kind of chastising them a little bit for the bugs and maybe a slightly short storyline. Uh, and don't get me wrong, the game is far from perfect. It's far from being what it was promised, and it's far from what I think it will end up being in the future if CD Projekt Red actually keeps their promise, which I really hope they do, because I would love to revisit Cyberpunk in even a year's time and just see if they came uh, anywhere close to what they said it would be. But overall, at this point in time, the, the honest truth about Cyberpunk 2077 is that it's a good game. In fact, it's a really good game, and I highly recommend that if you were waiting for this, uh, it's definitely worth a play, especially in Ultra Wide. Now, if you've been here for a little while, you know that I like to rate my games on a buy, wait for sale, or don't go near it. Uh, and honestly, this is really going to fall in between a buy and a wait for sale. And the wait for sale is really not necessarily wait for it to be a lesser price. I think it's honestly fairly priced. However, the wait will end up being wait for the bugs to clear. If you are not super hyped on Cyberpunk and you can kind of wait it out a little bit longer and wait to see that the bugs get fixed and that the game really hits its full potential maybe a year down the road they add in some dlc for free maybe they add in uh any of these fixes to the bugs and make this game something even greater then maybe that's going to be worth it for you if you've been super hype on cyberpunk though and you've been waiting for this game for so long i don't really think that it's worth waiting anymore i think it is worth picking up i think it is worth playing the story here is really good the game itself is awesome night city is wonderful the characters have such a personal feel graphically it looks amazing I, I I can't fault it so much for just being very buggy. While it is probably the most buggy game I have played, I have played plenty of buggy games from, say, Ubisoft or EA or all these other companies that were promising much less than they were with Cyberpunk and that were much worse games than Cyberpunk on release while being so buggy uh, that didn't get as much hate. Now, I understand that Cyberpunk promised a lot. I understand CD Projekt Red promised a lot, and what we got was not that. But honestly, the game is absolutely, even in its current state, I think worth a play. And I think for players who will play it now, uh, it'll be worth a play down the road once things are fixed. So guys, like I said, this is going to fall somewhere between a buy it right now and a wait for whatever you believe your tolerance is for bugs. So that's going to be it for me, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell as well to get notified when I'm dropping any of these videos coming up. I really want to thank you all for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Big shout out again to Al Light for gifting me Cyberpunk so I can bring you guys this review. Really, really enjoyed the game, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more reviews coming up. And of course, as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.